how are you doing? You want to know what the great thing about being a dad is? I found out. What happened? Is that when the kids Did you get, get thrown sick, up on? When the kids get sick, you eventually get. Oh it. God! And you can't tell if it's the seasons changing and your typical allergies acting up, or if it's because your kids are coughing and mucusing up all over your face. Look what just happened! Oh! Will got a camera. Oh! That's crazy. Hey. And come back to you know what? We're testing this out. I'm a it's, little scared that it's not gonna work, but it's doing, working. We're, we're doing, doing some things now. Bob installed them. Whoa! 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 Yeah, yeah, Hannah was sick last week after we yeah. got back from the convention. Yeah, it, something's definitely going around. As long as it's not that stomach thing that was happening not too long ago. Not, not Will, you Will echoes when it switches to him. Oh, I got to oh. turn off that stuff. All right, continue yeah. talking, Will. Okay, yeah, it's as long as it's not the stomach thing. Not what you have, but like an actual like stomach virus that has been going on. The shitting. Yes. Um. So, yeah, hey, everybody. How you doing? Lone Wolf Fit Podcast. Uh, I don't, what is it? Is it 1 to 25? That's, uh. That's a good number. We got a lot to talk about today. Uh, our, our favorite convention, convention is dead. dead for real this time. Uh, we got some Xbox news to talk about. Uh, we have some tangentially related PlayStation news about how much they don't like PC gamers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we have news That's for true. PC gamers as well. We got, we got a lot to talk about today on this here show. I turned off the echo. I okay. turned off the echo. Everybody relax. The echo is off. Jesus. And then I had another echo on the other camera. I forgot to turn off. We're good now. Bob Echo still? You're lying. <laughs> You're lying. Hello, hello, hello. All right, let me continue to fix it. Okay. Uh, before we get into anything, uh, why don't we talk about... Uh, what do we got? You got PlayStation Plus game. We got PlayStation Plus. We got Xbox Live Gold. And we got Nintendo Whoa! Switch Online. Hey! <laughs> Okay, this, this is going to be a disaster. Uh, if you have photosensitivity issues, you might want to listen to the podcast version of this. Um, so yeah, it's April. Spring is in the air. My birthday is Sunday. But uh, you don't care about that. What you care about are the free games you get if you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus, Xbox Live Gold, or this month, Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. All right, let's go. Uh, not a big month this month. Uh, over on PlayStation... Uh, all the games are available today, uh, as of today, April 4th. You get Sackboy, The Big Adventure for PS4 and PS5, uh, Tales of Iron for PS4 and PS5, and, this is the big one, Meet Your Maker for PS4 and PS5. This game, Bob, is uh, launching uh, as a PlayStation Plus game. Very similar to uh, how games like Resogun and Rocket League launched. And um, Fall Guys, they all launched as PlayStation Plus games. And took off, became big hits, became big, uh, got huge cult followings. Uh, still to this day for Resogun and Fall Guys. Uh, Meet Your Maker is a post-apocalyptic first-person uh, building and raiding game where every level is designed by players. Switch between roles as you mastermind uh, uh, devious outposts filled with traps and guards, and then gear up for methodical, fast-paced combat raiding other players' creations, Gain, uh, gaining an edge by choosing the right loadout, uh, perks, and consumables to match your challenge or playstyle. Uh, so it seems like it's a first-person uh, arena shooter where you get to build levels. That's going to be awful, because as Bob has learned from Mario Maker, uh, players are not game designers, so there's going to be some jank. Uh, Sackboy, A Big Adventure is not a traditional Little Big Planet game because you don't make anything in that game. It's just a big, uh, just a regular ass platformer. <laughs> this is one of those games that like they showcase the PS5 with at launch, but like, I don't think anyone really cares about it because it's not a real Little Big Planet game. What the hell's the name of it? Uh, Sackboy, A Big Adventure. Oh, I heard it was good. You keep saying you're echoing. I don't me. I don't see an echo. Hold on. Well, you don't see an echo. You hear an echo. Yeah, there is an echo. Huh. Why, though? I don't know. That sounds like a Bob problem. Oh, wait. Am I somehow... Maybe it's coming from something else. 
Oh. Uh, and Tales of Iron, I have never heard of this. It's a, it's a hand-drawn RPG adventure with punishingly brutal combat. Okay, so that's a skip for me. Uh, so yeah, those are your three games that you can get if you are if you have PlayStation Plus on PS4 or PS5. All three games are available on both. Meet Your Maker, uh, Sackboy, A Big Adventure, and Tales of Iron. Over on Xbox, what what is it? Okay. Over on Xbox, you know, where all the good stuff is. Where all the good stuff is, right there. Uh, we got Out of Space Couch Edition for the entire month of April. And then from April 16th to May 15th, we get Peaky Blinders Mastermind. What the hell? Peaky Blinders is a TV show about, uh, well, Killian Murphy is in it from Batman Begins. Uh, he plays... I want to say Irish guy who beats people up. That's literally all I know about Peaky Blinders. Apparently people love it. Uh, he wears like a newsboy cap. That's it. We rag on Xbox a lot. I figured it out. Okay. I figured it out. There was a delay on my mic and it and it made a whole echo. Okay. Thing. So now it should be okay. evened out. Good. Oh, God. All right. So sorry, okay. audio listeners. Let me see these freaking games. PlayStation Plus? Let Bob weigh in a little okay. bit. Uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Meet Your Maker. A lot of people keep telling me that I would like this because it's like Mario Maker. I don't like Mario Maker because of the making stuff. Right. I like Mario Maker because it's Mario. So I don't know how much I'd like this. Well, I mean, the whole point of it is like user-created levels. So maybe right. we'll get somebody who like makes a fancy level. Yeah, maybe. And you know what? I do I do like first-person platforming, too. I like, yeah. uh, what's that game that Mirror's I like? Edge? N- yes, Neon <laughs> White yes, also. That and too. that uh, weird game that I played at PAX called Hell of an Office. That was good. Whew. Okay. And Sackboy, I heard was really good. Okay. Tales of Iron, whatever, dude. Uh, April games with gold. Uh, looks like shit. Yeah. Uh, I was about to say, you know, we rag on Xbox all the time. For having a bad selection of games of gold. Yeah. Especially recently. At least I've heard of Peaky Blinders. Like the TV show and this game. I haven't heard of the game at all. The game was in a Nintendo Direct. And I remember laughing because I'm like, why is this in a Nintendo Direct? Why couldn't this have gone to a real game? Yeah, that is really weird. Yeah. Uh, I've never... Wait. I've never seen it in a, in a Nintendo Direct. It was in a Nintendo Direct. It Very was... long time ago, yes, probably. Yes. Okay. Before I cared about Nintendo Directs. Is that it? Uh no, we have speaking of Nintendo Directs, we got a Nintendo game coming. Oh shoot on April Boy 12th, howdy. Pokemon Stadium is coming to Switch Online plus expansion. Plus. Wow. So this is cool. Yes. Uh I think they explicitly said that there will not be uh that the whole Game Boy support. Like, yeah, like, like yeah, there's it, nothing. It, it in says the realm in like the very fine print, cannot transfer Pokemon, which again, like that, that kind of defeats the big purpose of this game. How are you going to have Pokemon? D- does it say it somewhere? Yeah, right at the, right at the bottom, Pokemon cannot be transferred in the game, like in the towards the beginning. Towards the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Up. Oh. Nintendo Switch Online complete. Pokemon cannot be transferred to this game. That's so lame. I know. Like, <laughs> like, what do you do in the game otherwise? I remember when we played the game, like we rented the game from Blockbuster mm-hmm. Video in our day. Um, and I remember like we couldn't get the, the transfer pack to work, so we just used the in-game Pokemon. And they were all dittos pretending to be Pokemon. Were those the rent of Pokemon that people kept talking about? I think so. Supposedly there's like mini games and stuff. Yeah. But they're showing battling. Yeah, so I don't know. So I guess those are the rent of Pokemon. Yeah, unless they... Was there a way to unlock Pokemon in the game if you didn't already have Pokemon Red or Blue? I think those are just rent of Pokemon. And, and I heard that it's also a lot harder if you're if you're not transferring your own Pokemon well, in. Well, yeah, because your Pokemon are all the ones with the level up, you know, yeah. and all the moves. and. So I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with this. Um I don't know. It's it's yeah. it's. Uh, I, I'm curious to see what's gonna break, like like or or what limitations we have. Yeah. There was this announced before that we were getting this. Yeah. Okay. No, it was so we knew about we were it getting this, but the question still remains: How are we gonna get Pokemon in this game? Yeah, I think this. 
has to be some weird like uh I think eventually we will get Pokemon games in some way that yeah. will have some sort of integration with They would this. have to add that in. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was uh I've been futzing around with the 3DS. Yeah. Uh I got a little thing called the H Shop which I'm making a video on. Ooh. So get ready for that to be shut down. Um it's like a pirate shop. Yeah. And it has Pokemon Bank on it. Oh. And you can straight up download the old Pokemon games, yeah. and I'm pretty sure everything transfers. Okay. So I don't want to go through the whole process, but I'm pretty sure everything would work. Okay. Does anybody in chat have any evidence of that? Can you just yeah. straight up download Pokemon Bank and one of the old Pokemon games off the H shop and just transfer stuff? Because uh, I don't want to be wrong. Uh. Anyway. That's all the games included with your subscription services so far Correct. that you can get. Yeah. Uh, Pokemon Stadium is April 12th. Yes. Uh, special thank you to King Shiro Neko for the 24 months and Will Wolf, damn it, That's with 38 me. months. Hey, Wolf Bros. What did you think of the Barbie movie trailer? <laughs> Personally, I don't think Christopher Nolan's new film Oppenheimer, which opens the same day, stands a chance. I got to be honest with you. Barbie looks awesome. It does. Right? Barbie looks it's really good. Really good. It's such an interesting idea. It's beautiful. Yeah. There's like uh uh there's there's funny jokes. Yeah, like actually funny jokes. Yeah. yeah, no, I think it's I think it's actually gonna be a legit good movie. And it was interesting the way it's set up where everybody's named Barbie and yeah. everybody's named Ken. I think if you because they also released all the posters for all the characters today, and they you know, they list uh these are the Barbies, these are the Kens, these are the humans. So some of these characters are going to uh, actually be... So I think they might be doing like a Lego movie thing. Well, it or? seemed like they were going to the the the, the normal world or yeah. something. Like that's where they were driving. And Will Ferrell, I think, plays the same character that he plays in the Lego movie. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, where's your Barbie selfie poster, Bob? What are you talking about? There was a, there's a website where you can like make your own Barbie poster. Oh, that's so, what I was seeing on Twitter. Yeah. I've been very busy with that. Setting up the freaking yeah. uh, thousand cameras that I have to redo, by the way, because that camera's not staying there. I got to change the camera mm. and change the color and everything. Hi, how you doing? I'm Bob. How's it going, guys? This feels weird to me. <laughs> That's cutting. Uh, is that it? That's everything. That's everything. Okay. Uh, your brother has a lot more facial hair than I expected. Well, now you're uh, now you're right up in him. Yeah. Hey. I need to shave those. It's getting a little it's getting a little big. It's getting a little, no. Mostly, you know like what? The, Let it happen. The neck. I never get around to like shaving the neck hair and mm -hmm. like that's okay. that's what gets me okay uh yo are you guys going to long island retro game expo this year uh yeah yeah we'll be there we'll be there somebody else in the chat uh asked about the mario movie uh i'm seeing it tomorrow uh oh. you're not anymore no I'm i gonna, have a ticket I'm, if you ever change your mind <laughs> no no i i have, i'm on babysitting duty tomorrow i'm gonna try and see it either thursday or friday okay. uh, i'm gonna try and see it as soon as possible okay uh yeah so i'm seeing it tomorrow i waited too long to get a midnight ticket and they all sold out yeah. <laughs> so uh i have to see it tomorrow uh and that's that and then there will be a whole nintendo podcast episode about our our, our, our feelings on the mario i did movie. read one early review of it and some of my fears seem to be coming true for the movie the review of from a review yeah what what like the things that they say that happened in the movie are things that i put, would put the mic closer to your head. things that they say were going to happen in the movie things that they say are hap happening in the movie were things that i was afraid were going to oh so you spoiled movie. it for yourself yeah yes and no okay like i didn't get like big spoilers like i didn't find out that like peach is really mario's mother or anything but like <laughs> you know okay i mean it got an eight on ign which honestly lower than i expected I thought it was going to be, like, Pixar level. See, I feel like that is a little high. Eight? Yeah. Okay. I mean, IGN is also the same website that gave Resident Evil Remake 10. <laughs> I, I was expecting it to be, of uh, uh, like, like very, very good. You know? Yeah, I was just, like, especially from, like, gaming websites, I'm expecting good. I feel like eight is, like, maybe, like, the, the most you could give a movie like this. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm thinking anim when I think of animated movies, I think of like Disney and Pixar stuff. So, okay. The problem is this is not made by Disney or Pixar. It's made by Illumination. Right. The Minions people. Who made the Lego movies? 
Warner Brothers. Okay. Because those are also up there with the, yes. the, with the Disney But the thing Pixar is, stuff. the Lego movies have a have um a leg up because those were done by Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who do who did uh Into the Spider Verse. They did oh I didn't Twenty One Jump Street. They did uh Clone High. You remember that TV show? Oh, they, I didn't know they did yeah. Clone High. Yeah, that was them. Uh, they're geniuses. Yeah, like they're they're an anomaly. So that's what the Lego Movie had. Okay. Uh, all right. I thought I was, I had, I, ex- I mean, I had bare minimum expectations when I heard that there was going to be a Maori movie, but after seeing all of the trailers and stuff leading up to it, I got more and more, yeah. my expectations got higher and We'll higher. see. I mean, <sighs> movies are not pieces, you know, they're mm-hmm. a whole entity. So like, yes, I'm, I saw like one or two things that like scare me, but for all I know, I go to the movie and the entire 90 minute experience was good. Mm-hmm. you know the the few things that bother me about it were negligible because the whole 90 minute experience worked for me okay you know that's that's what i'm hoping happens we'll see okay well i'll find out tomorrow night yeah uh anyway also jackson artist thanks for the prime bowser is mario's dad what well yeah it's in the original japanese is it video game. no oh did you know though? You fooled me. The original Japanese box art for Mario Brothers on Famicom that features Shigeru Miyamoto's design for Bowser. The design of Bowser that we all know was not Miyamoto's design; it was someone else's. Wait, what box art? The original Japanese Famicom box art for Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers. He's like gray. The original. The original. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, yeah. that's Miyamoto's design for Bowser. I don't remember who designed like the the classic look for Bowser. Right. Yeah, it was very quickly after this that he got yeah. redesigned. Uh all my cuts are have been all messed up. I don't know what I did. I messed up everything. Uh all right, so E3's been canceled. Yay, Yay good. <laughs> Douchebags. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, E3's been canceled. Uh, we kind of assumed this was gonna happen. It was trending that way, and I think the fact that they made it official, like, really just hammered the uh, the point home. Yeah, it's just I mean we keep reporting on people pulling out. Yeah, and you know. uh, they finally did. Yeah, uh, this was a difficult decision because of all the efforts we and our partners put uh towards making this event happen. But we do, but we had to do what was right for the industry and what was right for E3, said Reed Pops, uh, Kyle Martin Kish, in a statement shared with GameSpot. We appreciate and understand that interest, interested companies wouldn't have playable demos ready and that resourcing challenges made being at E3 this summer an obstacle that they couldn't overcome. For those who did commit to E3 2023, we're sorry we can't put on the showcase you deserve and that you've come to expect from Reed Pops event experiences. Ooh, I didn't even know they put out a full official statement. Yeah. Uh, the info first leaked via an email sent by the ESA to its members and obtained by IGN. Uh, E3 simply did not garner a substan- uh, sustained interest necessary to execute it in a way that would showcase the size, strength, and impact of our industry. Uh, which means... Nobody wanted to Nobody wanted to go, yeah. and nobody wanted to pay them, yeah. which is the important thing. All these people have to pay. And they're all like, we don't gotta do that anymore. Yeah. So... They just decided not. Nah. Uh, in a statement to GameSpot, Reed Pop also confirmed the digital showcase scheduled around E3 will still take place. Oh. Those uh, those include Summer Games Fest and Xbox and Bethesda showcases. So those are things that were going to happen anyway. Yeah. Separate from E3. So, I guess E3 was trying to bundle them into the E3 umbrella. So that they could say we have all of these things happening. Yes. Uh, the company also said that it will continue to work with the ESA on future E3 events. Suggesting that though E3 2023 is canceled, this is not the end for the iconic industry event. Eh, E3 uh, <laughs> could possibly appear again in the future. It didn't happen in 2020 for obvious reasons. Yeah, it happened. They did a digital only event. I can't remember. If it was I think it was in 2021 they did a digital only event, but they didn't do one last year. Like I I, what does digital only even mean? Because it means Greg Miller got up on stage like, "Hey guys, it's me, Greg Miller. Here are some games that are coming out." Okay. I don't remember that because, yeah, no, because, remember because it was just because everybody could just do it on their yeah. own. Yeah, no, it wasn't it wasn't like a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty nineteen was the last one, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Hold on. Let me just confirm because I know there was one year in between they did a 
they did a digital only event. So let me see if right. I can find out. I remember they kept canceling it over a year after year, yeah. after, which is why like it made perfect sense that they weren't going to do it. I tweeted all the way back when they announced E3 this year. They announced it on uh, last July 2022. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the tweet was E3 returns to LA in 2023. And I said, no, it won't. 2021, they had an online only event uh branded as the electronic entertainment experience due to its online nature okay here's what happened all of these people uh, all of these companies uh realized they didn't need this shit yeah uh they're all doing their own uh announcements and stuff and and like like xbox is having their showcase mm. which didn't they say it's not part of e3 yeah, they just said they're doing it in conjunction with E3, like yeah, like at was, the at the time they're doing it at the same time as E3. That's what I was um that's what I was referring to before, like Summer Games Fest and E3 and Bethesda Showcase. They were going to be their own separate thing, but you know E3 was going to package it under the E3 umbrella, so that right. so that it can make E3 look like the one stop destination for all of gaming news for the upcoming year. And e- Xbox specifically said this year they're not going to be at E3; right. they're just going to have announcements at the Around, same time. Yeah. And now E3 is saying they are still doing Xbox? Yeah. Like, that's still saying, like, they're, like, it's a part of their showcase when it's really not. When Xbox said it's not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Xbox said it's not part of the showcase. Yeah. That's so lame. The ESA president and CEO, Stanley Pierre Louis, um, gave an interview explaining why E3 2023 was canceled. This is the real reason, not all the things we just said, which were okay. <laughs> he largely, largely attributed E3 2023's demise to the combination of publishers adjusting their marketing plans due to changes in the economy and deciding to run their own digital showcases. COVID-19 also played a part um, in changing the game development timelines. Uh, Speaking to GameIndustry.biz, which we learned last week was owned by ReadPop, uh, Pierre-Louis said, uh, we were were off to a strong start. There was interest among exhibitors, industry players, media, and certainly the fans. However, ultimately, um, there were challenges that proved too large to surmount. Like publishers saying, no. Yeah. Uh, first companies had uh, several companies have reported that the timeline for development has been altered since the start of the COVID pandemic. Second, economic headwinds have caused several companies to reassess how they invest large market events. Uh, and third, companies are starting to experience uh, with how starting to experiment with how to find the right balance between in person events and digital marketing opportunities. It's just they 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 are all they have to pay to be at the event. Yes. They have to pay to be at E3. Yes. And they have to do their uh announcements and, yes. and they make a big spectacle out of that. And a lot of these companies were doing their announcements on their own. Nintendo has been doing it for years. Yes. They just make a video, which is the easiest thing mm-hmm. to do. Uh Xbox has their own theater, so they're like we're just going to do it there. We don't got to pay you for the yeah. space cuz we got our own space. We could just do it here. Um and a lot of these companies realize they can just pay for the space or do a video on their own. Why do they got to pay the ESA yeah. to be part of their stupid convention yeah. that only media people are going to be at? Well, now it's open to more people than that. But yeah, I, I I would venture to guess that general public that went to E3 probably didn't have, have favorable things to say either. No. I'm Well, I don't know because there's always that like blindness. Like you go to it you know, and you're surrounded by all these video games and stuff and content creators. And, and you know, in the moment, it feels like Disneyland. Yeah. But like, when you step stop and think about it for a minute, it's not. It's more like you know, Adventureland down the block <laughs> you know, on Long Island. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand. Uh, and and I mean, uh, I I get it that like, uh, there's the whole spectacle around it, and and people don't know what it used to be like. Uh-huh. But people who are going to something like E3 have probably been to other conventions before. Yeah. They got to know. That they probably have the better times at other conventions. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, your first one was the first one that they opened up to the public, right? 2018, yeah. Was that the first one they opened to the public? It might have been the second or third. Yeah, so yeah. you already... But you, you've you been to a bunch of different conventions. I've been to different conventions, yeah. yeah. Even like so you already had that perspective. Yeah. Just like, you could tell like this was a very different type of event. This was not an event made... For the public. Right. And yet they still tried to have it both ways. Right. You know, have it be this like private exclusive industry event 
but also it's it's comic con you know it's you know star wars celebration it's something it's not yeah you know uh nanner puss brings up a good point this is very bad news for smaller developers who relied on publishing deals and contacts that they made at e3 yes uh well that was back when e3 was an industry only show that was a very big deal that was a part of it i don't think it's so there's two there's two things about this one of them is uh, it could be seen as a bad thing because publish uh, uh, small companies rely on having their announcements attached to the big announcements. Yes, which will still happen in the Xbox showcase, in the in the Nintendo showcase. I don't know if PlayStation's even doing a showcase, but they're going to have something during the summer anyway. But I think what they're getting at is, you know, the fact that there was a physical place you can go yes. to and actually like go to people and like meet them face to face and yes. like get to know them and make deals like in person. Like that was a big thing. Yes. And and there there were games that were shown up at E three that like publishers would sign deals with at the show. Yeah. And like Lord D C says, there's always packs. But even more than that, there's always G D C. Yeah. Which is specifically yes. designed for those meetings. Yeah. So I don't think it's a loss, to be honest with you. I don't think losing this FaceTime yeah. with big publishers, I don't think it's a loss at all. <sighs> things are just different now. Yeah, I think there will be other opportunities. It's for not so like much that. a loss as much as it is I would say a setback, but like you can always like alter yourself to find new yeah. ways to go to the other conventions like yeah. PAX or GDC. Nintendo an industry pioneer and ahead of their time again. Yeah, for not going. <laughs> well, not for the directs. Because yeah. even when Nintendo were yeah. doing directs, they still had a booth at the show floor. They were kind of the last holdouts. Yeah, Sony. Uh, well, th they Sony were the first. Out. Nintendo was the first one to not do the announcements there, but they were the last ones to have a booth there. Yeah, Xbox already went across the street. Yeah, PlayStation pulled out a while ago. They were PlayStation, PlayStation was in the out. parking lot for a while. PlayStation, well. No, because when the first year I went, they had a booth because they showed off Spider Man. Mm -hmm. They did their press. The thing is that the press conferences were never during E three. They were the weekend before, so like the Sony press conferences, the Microsoft press conferences, those were always like the weekend before. Those were like Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday was E three. Yeah. So like Sony would do it on Sunday, Microsoft would do it Sunday night, and then. Monday was E3, and you go to the game floor, the convention floor, and you see all the games that they're talking about. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, the things like everybody remembers about E3, all those press conferences, were not technically part of E3. Yeah. They were like we said it all the time. Yeah. I was just saying, PlayStation uh, didn't have a booth in so, 2019. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. were the they were the first console manufacturer to, like pull out completely. Completely. Yeah. They weren't yeah. even being cheeky and being yeah. in the parking lot anymore. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, I mean. That's the end of E3. I don't think we're losing anything. I think yeah. we're. I think things are just different now. Yeah. People don't like change, so they. It, some people are upset by it. Uh, I think we'll find something better. I think yeah, there'll, there'll I be think better so. industry things yeah. that 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 will work better for everybody. I think this is just me. I think they're gonna try again at some point. I mm -hmm. think because the ESA makes a lot of money from this. Yes. Um, I think they will try and do something because there was a few years like when E3 was literally just like. Just dudes in the ho in the hotels, like showing off games. Like, yeah. It wasn't even a press conference. It wasn't even like an expo. So I think they'll they, maybe they'll try that. Like they'll try something to keep E three around. But I think you know, three years without it being there, nobody nobody's gonna care. Yeah. You know. No, I think people have already lost interest completely, yeah. and and all of the other publishers have already gotten used to not having their stuff physically at a convention. So yeah. they're just like, forget it. We don't need you. We, we we figured it out. Yeah. We got it. We don't need to spend thousands of dollars. I wonder how much it is for these guys. To oh, I'm sure up. it's a lot. I think it's a lot. Yeah. Because not only are you paying for the convention space, you're paying for the mystique of the prestige of being yeah. at E3. Uh, at PAX, our management company had a pretty large booth right in the front, right when you walk in. Yeah. They were in between Gigabyte and another big company i forgot there are two big companies and then our management was in the right. middle and their whole booth was toxic avenger <laughs> toxic uh, crusaders. crusaders toxic yes. crusaders uh and i was like how did you get this 
spot yeah you know right in the front and they're like it wasn't a lot it was like the same as having a booth right yeah. away in the back we just got lucky i think a lot of it has to do with like how much floor space you take up because you know yeah. nintendo takes up half the floor but like bandai takes up like maybe this room yeah so yeah no yeah the, you are paying for the space but yeah. i thought paying for the the the, 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 location. the location yeah i thought that mattered all right. Well, anyway, uh, that's our talk. Uh, yeah. Car- Carolina Girl says, I think an E3 would work in the capacity of live stream or even a Twitter feed. The amount we used to get content wise would be amazing to get again. Yeah. I liked that too about E3. Yeah. Everything happening all at once, but, but we could still get that. Yeah. You can still. I mean, technically, that's what Nintendo Directs are. Those yeah. um, Xbox developer directs are basically the same thing. The Sony state of plays are basically, it's that. And then they just come out more frequently. Everybody's just got to get better at making those. Like, yeah. like, uh, Xbox finally made a good one. Yeah. <laughs> the last one was finally good. Yes. That was PlayStation good. still, they it's still sterile. got, yeah, it has they has no like personality. They need it. some work. Yeah. Um, so that's that. You already know our opinion on E3. Fuck them. Yeah. Uh, they doxed everybody one of the years, and yeah. and and they uh, they had a, the convention was actually bad to go to. Yeah, well, it was shockingly bad to go to. Yeah, and uh, there's much better conventions out there. Yeah, I had faith that Reed Pop was going to do a good job, but it's really not their fault. Yeah, I feel like they were given an impossible task. Yeah, to try to revitalize something that nobody wanted. Because every um, year I, I love PAX. Every yeah. year we go to PAX. Yeah. It's been great. And, you know, I was much I could play about New York Comic Con, which is run by Repop. I like going to New York Comic Con. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just I just pulled out all my badges, all my convention badges to find E3, and I guess I haven't gone to E3 in a while, yeah. so I don't know where my badges are. But uh, uh, yeah, I I can't, forgot about Comic Con. Yeah. <laughs> we go every year because I've been going one day. Yeah. Anyway uh all right that's that we got a couple of notifications i yeah. think we got uh original spiff who said with the six months who said phew just made it from work am i i'm here to politely judge will's controller wall setup did you uh, tweet something i tweet yeah so you know how i'm like i tweeted a while ago that I, i'm mounting my controllers on the wall okay so i did it came with two options as they always do uh the sticky mount and then uh screwdriver. Like you drill a hole into it and mount it with the screw. Oh god. I, yeah, I I I did the sticky ma- the sticky uh route and it just they just all fall off. So this is before. That's before. And then this and is then after. after. What the hell? Yeah. So like the it's not 3M uh pads, it's like some cheap version apparently. And like it just over time just like those are not heavy controllers either. The, like the the weight just like got too much and they would just fall. Well, aren't he? Guess what? A lot of these things are three D printed. I know, so. I know. So, but I have the, I have the screws for them. One of these days, I gotta actually like drill holes and okay, fix it. I'll fix it. It'll be fine. I'll be cool again. <laughs> I see the pencil marks too. You tried to level it. I did, and it worked. They were level. Okay. And then they all. Yeah, you know it is. All the controllers are different heights. So, yeah. So it's so, it, yeah. It looks it looks bad. Doesn't work out. Yeah. I don't have a good like controller display. I used to have them on like stands and charging cradles and like those worked really well, but like I wanted to like clean up that space mm-hmm. and like have something nicer, like visually pleasing. And I like the idea of just plucking it off the wall and yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Uh okay. You know what I'm doing? You know what I printed today? I spent I think six hours on my 3D printer. I printed uh I'm I'm printing a cable runner to go on top of my desk. Okay. So they're all going to snap together. Yeah, yeah. But I screwed up and I printed this little piece is going to go so I have the 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 monitor mounts, the mm-hmm. monitor thing that that holds it holds two monitors. Yeah, yeah. That it needs to go around that. Okay. So I made a thing that goes ar- I learned how to make things. <laughs> I printed a thing that goes around yeah. it so now I can print the other pieces around that too. So then all my cables could be hidden behind like a little black there thing. You go. Okay. Anyway, more, more why don't we talk about more video game news? Like for example, okay. PlayStation VR uh apparently is not th- So here so wait, hold on. Back it up. There was a thing before that there was a rumor that PlayStation was reeling back production because the pre-orders were bad yes and And then playstation came out and said that's not true yes and i said that's bullshit yeah and guess what turns out it was bullshit. turns out it was bullshit uh 
A new Bloomberg piece has been published based on estimates uh, from research firm IDC, which says that PSVR 2 may sell around 270,000 units from its February 22 release date through the end of March. How does this compare to the original PSVR, the best-selling VR headset of all time? Really? Apparently, uh, there's no direct comparison as the first official numbers we got from Sony was that it had sold uh, 915,000 units between October 2016 and February 2017, uh, four months after its debut. Uh, Then it took until June for them to announce it hit 1 million sales. Here... Uh, 270,000 units uh, in the first five weeks may indicate a pace that ends up being below the original PSVR, assuming sales would be fairly uh, front-loaded in the in the release month when the biggest VR enthusiasts pick it up and may, many of its high-profile games are launched. This would say something both about PSVR 2 as a specific device, but also about the larger VR market as a whole. The tech itself is not the problem. By all accounts, PSVR 2 is a fantastic VR headset, and packs an incredible amount of tech for its price. That said, that price is likely too high, something the IDC also concludes in its analysis published in Bloomberg. At $550, it's more expensive than both the PS5 models themselves, plus you need a PS5 to run it as opposed to a standalone meta headset. Then there's the VR in general, which has been growing painfully slow in some areas, particularly Meta's Horizon Worlds, has become something of a running industry joke. There, there has been an unfortunate backlash Sorry, there's been an unfortunate link between VR and the metaverse, which even Bloomberg's own headline refers to. But PSVR 2 has little to do with the metaverse, with no equivalent Horizon Worlds experience. It's just mainly a lot of individual games, many of which are even quite good. But either way, mainstream consumers have not embraced the VR tech anywhere close to mobile, console, or PC gaming. And if if these estimates pan out, it could indicate for Sony specifically that the market may actually be shrinking over time. That makes sense. Yeah, Uh, this is the second uh, recent high profile Bloomberg article about the PSVR 2's woes. Back in January, (laughs) uh, Takashi Mochizuki reported that Sony had cut PSVR sales forecast based on poor pre-orders. Sony uh, refuted this, saying they had not cut uh, production numbers. Uh, So yeah, it's not looking good for the PSVR 2. That's uh, not really surprising. No. Uh, Not at all. I... I said like when the when the news first broke they were cutting production numbers like yeah. this is a we- this is in a weird middle ground because it's too expensive for the casuals who would just get a, a meta quest yeah and it's too low tech for the enthusiasts who would rush it for like the HTC or the Valve Index or like stuff like that yeah it it it, it was a weird choice yeah and and I understand like it, there is some pretty cool tech in there but it's like you said it's still in the middle ground yeah it, it's got the cool tech. But the people who are interested in the certain technology that it has are going to get something different. They're yeah. going to get something for their PCs that's going to be a little better than what this is. And, like, this is launching fairly close to, like, the PS5's launch. Yeah. The PSVR, the first one, if I remember correctly, didn't come out until well into the PS4's life cycle. So hundreds of thousands of millions of people already had PS4s. Yeah, nobody – we yeah. just finally – now if you go into a store – you might see a PlayStation Five there. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, it really is like it may it may be a great device, but it really is the wrong place, wrong time for something like this. And it sucks because if you know this doesn't do well, then Sony's never going to make a VR headset again. And I don't care if they don't. <laughs> I know. I, look, I don't either. But maybe it's not for them. Maybe, but like I know there are a lot. There are VR enthusiasts who genuinely like playing VR games, and like that's this is gonna. And they're not me. fucking buying these, <laughs> man. It's not, yeah. Uh, K Jack in the chat says I'd rather have a PSVR two for my PC than the Quest two. Honestly, I'd buy it over the Index. There's no reason why they would limit the PSVR two to not work on a PC. It has all the it's USB C. Yeah. Just plug into a PC and let it work. But they purposely nerfed it and made it proprietary so it won't work on a PC. If they lowered the price of this by even like a hundred dollars and made it, you know, farted out a firmware update that made it uh, usable on a PC, then I, I think more people would buy this. I think if it's the same price as it is now and they release a firmware update for the PC, it would sell more. Well. 
because I think those enthusiasts, I think yeah. it's, I think that's a good price point for those PC games that, right. that you can then run at a higher, uh, 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 a better graphical quality. You right. can't, it's not going to be any higher resolution or frame rate, but you can run it at a better graphical quality on your PC. And it is in that middle ground now, all of a sudden, because you don't need a PlayStation. Right. You can just use the play, the, 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 the device you already have. And if you had a meta quest, this is a little bit of an upgrade. Right. But if you already have a meta quest and a PC, it's kind of worth it to just play the games on PC. Uh, the valve index headset plus controllers is $750. Yeah. That's kind of a lot. Yeah. Okay. So even and the technology, well, I don't know about that one. I'm pretty sure the technology is a little better in the PlayStation than, right. than, than that. Well, even still, like, like you were saying, at the current price for the PSVR 2, if they did a firmware update to make it playable on PC, yeah, like that that can make it competitive. My, my biggest gripe with the PlayStation VR is that you're limited to PlayStation. Yeah. But like with the Quest, you got the games that are in that play on the headset. You have you have the Quest uh, uh, storefront. Yeah. And then you have Steam, and then you have everything that a PC could run because you could just plug it into a PC. Yeah. So even though it's like slightly lower resolution, my biggest gripe with the Quest is that uh, the focusing on on the on the eyes is a little weird. Yeah. And it's a lot better on the PlayStation. That's my biggest. I mean, everybody is always everybody's going nuts about these the OLED screens in the PlayStation VR two. It's whatever. It's fine. <laughs> it's good. It's yeah. it's good. It's better than the Quest. But I'd rather spend less money, be able to play on a dedicated headset, and have all of the different storefronts that a PC has. Yeah. And you get a lot more versatility out of the Quest, even though it's cheaper and uh, the focusing distance weird, and you don't get the OLED. Right. But it's still better, in my opinion. Uh, Vive headsets are expensive, man. They like start at 800 bucks and just go up. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And KJAX says you need the base station with the index. And that's another, th- a lot of these things that you'd have like all the different sensors yeah. and stuff that you need. Uh, I-, I think PlayStation did a good job with the VR. It's just a weird price point. And I don't know who it's for. It's yeah. it's for PlayStation fans that want to try VR and have a fuck ton of money. Yeah. Because normal PlayStation fans don't have that much money because yeah. they bought a, I mean, a- PlayStation 5 is expensive, but like you're buying a console because you don't want to buy a four thousand exactly, dollar pc yeah. so the whole playstation getting into vr doesn't really make any sense it, it, it sounds to me like a company that saw that other companies were getting into vr and they were like we should probably have a foothold in this I see, yeah but i feel like the you could say that the first time around mm-hmm. the fact that they're doing it again makes it seem like they're serious about it because if it was just the writing a fad, they wouldn't have done a PSVR two. I would will have s- just left it at PSVR one. I will say I do want to break it out again because uh, I found a bunch of codes yeah. that, 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 that they gave me, and one of them's uh, Gran Turismo. I want to try Gran Ooh, Turismo. That that, that everybody's going nuts about the Gran yeah. Turismo VR thing, and I wanna I wanna try it. You said that Resident Evil Village is one of them, right? Yeah. yeah. Is it regular Resident Evil or just the VR version of Village? I mean, it's got to be the VR version, right? Why would they give me the regular version? Because I think it, the VR version is included in the regular version. I might be wrong. I thought it's one version, and and you just get, uh, you plug in a VR headset, it's VR all of a sudden. Right, but if you play that version without the VR headset, it... isn't it just the regular version then? That's what I'm saying. I'm pretty sure it's both. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's both. Both in one package, not two separate packages is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's both in one package. Okay. I, before I do any of that, I want to play Resident Evil 4. <laughs> I I'm playing it now. <laughs> Somebody in the chat says, "Have I? Do I still play my PS5? I actually broke it out recently to play Destiny. I've there been playing go. Destiny on it through remote play, so I'm not even playing. <laughs> on the, I'm playing on my MacBook. Yeah, it's kind of awesome. But you've been playing Resident Evil Four. I have been playing Resident Evil Four. Uh, do um, we do we jump to that? Uh, I guess we could. I'm not far in it, okay. but I, I I think I've hit a point where like I get the gist of what the game is doing. Okay. Here's the, like, I'm hearing a lot of phenomenal things about. It. Yeah, this the game. problem is it's good. Like, it's, <laughs> it's really good. It's great. Uh, the problem is like it's Resident Evil Four. Like Resident Evil Four was like it's not just like a great game. It was like a watershed game. It was like a moment in time. Mm-hmm. And to like try to recreate that moment in time, like is 
next to impossible. So I feel like, and the fact that the game is very similar, because Resident Evil 4 was different from every Resident Evil that came before it. Yeah. This Resident Evil 4 is very similar to the Resident Evils that came before it. You know, it's extremely similar to the, the original game. It's extremely similar to the 2 and 3 remake that just came out. Oh. They add, like, they add, like, well, little things here okay. and there. To be fair, they though. Add, like, more Resident Evil 4-ness to it. To be fair, the remakes took a lot from Resident Evil 4. Exactly. Yeah. Like, this game doesn't exist. It's a stupid thing to say, but, like, this game doesn't exist without Resident Evil 4. So, like, you, it's kind of hard to escape that shadow. That being said, the game they made is very good. It's, it adds a lot of... It adds a lot of the right stuff that you want to see added in a remake. It uh, doesn't add any of the things you don't want to see added. Mm -hmm. It doesn't try to streamline everything. It doesn't try to make everything all nice and neat and modernized. It still has a lot of like classic gameplay designs and mentality to it. Just it's done in a way that feels modern. Okay. You know, now I that's think good. The, the one thing I did have to do was I changed the controls because apparently... This always tripped me up in the Resident Evil 2 remake. You just tap the run button and run. Like you don't like you know. You press it once and, he, and yeah, you go. Yeah, you don't oh. have to press and hold it. So that was screwing me up with this. So I switched it to hold and run. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, because it and like I tried because like that was really was tripping me up. I tried different control setups. I tried the one that played most like the original Resident Evil 4, but that screws up because you have to leave your thumb on the x button to run and like i couldn't access the analog stick to change the camera so it was a whole thing but it's good i'm enjoying it i recommend it uh I'm gonna how play, far did you get not very far i'm gonna play more of it tomorrow night um and we'll see and i highly highly recommend playing the original red single four because it still holds up and it's still very good but if you're afraid of the controls and if you're afraid of like weird 2005 game play design mentalities sure play the new one i don't care you're still getting resident Evil four Wood was making fun of me because I don't play games for more than like three hours. Yeah. Well, you know, he's got a point. If you run a gaming <laughs> channel. You should play I don't play any new games either. Yeah. <laughs> I, that kind of makes me just want to play the original Resident Evil 4. Yeah. I mean, look, it's available on every system under the sun. <laughs> I'm going to play this on Steam Deck. I'm going to get it on Steam yeah. Deck. Yeah. Just download it on that. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll have it on PC, but I'll yeah. probably play it the most on Steam i will Deck. say like one of the things that like i was talking about in the lead up to this game was like resident Evil 4 had a lot of personality yeah it was very like unapologetically campy and like in your face and fun uh this resident Evil 4 does take things much more seriously it's not as campy it's trying to be more uh yasi Kurosawa says sensible i'm gonna try to say like more serious and then it tries to have Leon say like funny things, but like the disconnect, like it doesn't feel as right as the first time. I don't know how it is because like the original Resident Evil Four did have serious things, but also wacky, quirky things, yeah. and I think we kind of accepted it because uh, it it's a it's a friggin' GameCube video game, you know, yeah. like like it was animated. Yeah. Like this is more realistic looking, and they're yeah. shooting it like a like a movie, and the tone is different because yeah. of that. Yeah, and the thing that always bugs me, like when people write about Resident Evil, the original Resident Evil Four, and they say like, "Oh, it, it turned the franchise action. It was all action. They made the Resident Evil Four Resident Evil action franchise." The original Resident Evil Four was still scary. It was still a horror game. There were still moments in that game where I felt scared, where I felt tense, where I was afraid. And I everybody leaves that out because the action focus was so much more present than it had been in the past. Yeah. And now I'm seeing people like, oh, they finally made Resident Evil 4 a horror game. Like, no, it's always been a horror game. Yeah. It's just now it's a serious horror game rather than a campy horror game. Yeah. So Get your history straight. Games I, I think it makes a lot of sense to say that uh, the original Resident Evil 4 was so different than everything that came before it, and that's yeah. why it was so important. And now it's kind of the same as everything that came yeah. before it. It's kind of like uh, the best way I can describe it is like the original Evil Dead was like it was supposed to be a horror movie, but because they only had $20 to make the movie, like it had this unintentional camp to it. So when they had when they made the sequel, they just went full in like, all right, yeah, no, this, this, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna make this a fun horror movie, and it was. 
And then when they did the remake in like 2013 or whatever, it was like dead serious. And it's just like this. I think you kind of missed the point of the Evil Dead. Yeah. So uh, the Konami man says, I disagree, Will. There was like one small section that felt like a horror game to me back in the day. Well, I can attest that Will used to scream in the basement. I did. <laughs> there were a lot of parts like the the Wolverine motherfuckers that would come at you of uh, the. uh. Oh, I forgot what they were called. The, re- the Iron Maiden regenerators or like terrifying. You hear that music and you just shit your pants right away. Yeah, no, he was, uh, I was big baby. He was big. Ba- it, it was, it was a horror game to him. Yeah. Still a big baby. I was screaming during the Resident Evil 2 remake. It's a horror. It's, it, it's got all the makings of a horror game because yeah. like, uh, you got big scary monsters coming after you. They're, they're slow moving. You, you're slow moving. The, the, the controls are a little frustrating and, 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 uh, you have limited resources, so yeah. so you can very quickly uh, get caught in a corner. You know, yeah. it, it that's what makes it a horror game. I will say I appreciate them bringing in, bringing back the attaché case for the inventory because, like, that was always explain that to me. Do you remember, like, the inventory screen in Resident Evil yeah. Four was like the the briefcase? Yeah. So like, you have to like move things around to make sure yeah. everything fits yeah that's still in the remake which is good because that was a fun game in and of itself wood was complaining because uh you can't you can you you can only store weapons you can't store other items yeah they added like a store feature like you could take things out of the briefcase and like put them in like a, a storage area and it's just for weapons it's not for anything else oh okay which is kind of lame was that not in the original game well, not in the original oh but you got rid of a weapon you got rid of the weapon because oh, they encourage okay. you to upgrade your, to different weapons right okay i understand okay so that makes yeah. sense i mean yeah. that then but they also added like a f- for the d-pad you can like hot swap between weapons so like just press up on the d-pad your pistol down as your shot that is good yeah because yeah. i was always pressing start yeah. going into the briefcase yeah so it's good just play it and by it's good, I mean it's bad because there's a game breaking bug. Oh yeah, bro. that's the you whole what, reason we're talking you about. Know what right didn't now. have a game breaking bug in the original because it was perfect. <laughs> uh, Capcom has alerted Resident Evil 4 remake players that a rare game breaking bug has been found at the beginning of Chapter 12 that could stop your progress if you attack with your knife right after obtaining a key item. Whoa. Capcom shared the news on Twitter saying that the issue affects players on all platforms, but that it intends to fix this issue in a future update and apologizes for any inconvenience. Luckily, the fix will allow players who were impacted by this bug to continue their current save. As for the bug itself, Capcom has detailed what it is and how to avoid it in a non-spoilery, non-spoilery way. A cutscene will play at the beginning of Chapter 12, after which the player will receive a key item, Capcom writes. Uh, please refrain from attacking with the knife until the notification for obtaining this item is displayed in the upper right of the screen. After obtaining the item, it will appear in the key items and treasures menu in the attache case. If it has not appeared, please reload save data from before the start of chapter 12. This bug aside, Resident Evil 4 Remake has been a joy for many of us to play, blah, blah, blah. So does this game uh, overwrite saves all the time, or does it have a list of saves? It has a list of saves. Okay, that, the then, then yeah. it's okay. So it's... it's it's something that can be avoided. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's something there that you can attack with the knife, and that's why people were using the knife. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, just hang tight. If you get to Chapter 12, don't use your knife right away. Um, and, yeah, you'll be fine. If not, just wait for the, the patch. It seems like it'll happen. I will say one thing they added to the remake that I do like, mm-hmm. because they added knife degradation. and that's, <laughs> Don't get me started on that. When you go up to the barrels and the boxes to break... So like find items instead of using your knife you just hit x and you break it with your elbow so you don't have to damage your knife oh that's good yeah that's good you know what else is good not having a knife that breaks <laughs> all the time that knife is like you have to upgrade your knife like it's it's the dumbest thing i hate it so much and if your knife breaks you have to go around and find kitchen knives and that like break instantly and like my briefcase is just full of kitchen knives right now that's very stupid because yeah. the whole thing with the original game was that the knife was weak, but yeah. but usable, but usable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the, yeah, yeah. That was the whole thing. It's aggravating. I hate it so much. That's been a thing in Resident Evil since the first Resident Evil using the knife. Well, the thing like the knife in the first few Resident Evil games were like 
you know, just you might as well just die because yeah. they're useless. Yeah, Resident but Evil... you had people running around doing the whole game yeah. with just the knife. Resident Evil Four was the first one to make the knife actually semi useful because, yeah. like, you can it's easier to use and you just push people back. Yeah, you just push people back so you can run away. Yeah, it's easier to use. You can use it to break boxes without using your ammo. Now, like, it, everything damages the knife and it sucks. Mm. That's stupid. And the knife takes up an inventory slot, which it didn't in the original. Because it wasn't in the inventory. It was on his shoulder. Uh, Mike J. File says, you'll get a better knife. Yeah, it sounds like if you get the better knife and then you swipe it, you break the game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. All right, more stuff. We got notifications, too. We got okay. uh, Mecha Dragon with 400 bits. Will, did you see the fan art of Mouse Ashley all over Twitter? Yeah, apparently that's the thing. Like, the, the color Mouseley. Yeah, what's that about? They're just they're turning her into a mouse. Someone made a PC mod just recently about she's a mouse now. They were quick with those PC mods. Yeah. They were very yeah. quick. And they just immediately turned Leon into a slut. Well, I mean, look at him. <laughs> I think it's great that there's uh, so many characters in that game, and Leon's the, the got to be yeah. the, the sexualized one. Yeah. <laughs> he deserves it. He deserves it. He does. Uh, all right. Next up, Game Pass Friends and Family quietly launches in the U.S. Did we talk about this? Uh, no, we said it was coming, but uh, apparently it might have leaked already. Uh, Microsoft confirmed it's been testing a new Game Pass Friends and Family plan back in August of 2022, but since then the company hasn't given fans an official release date. Uh, based on new advertising that's been spotted, though, it looks like Microsoft could be gearing up for a launch of new Game Pass here soon. Oh, wait, hold on. I want to read. Uh, we're just going right to the tweet okay. that they linked in the article. It's Jaw Muncher who yes. says, I'm guessing Xbox Game Pass friends and family just quietly launched in the U.S. was on my homepage. And here it is on the homepage. Uh, and then dashboard seems to be the only way to access it at the moment in the picture of their dashboard. Mm-hmm. And then they wrote. Wait, where's the where's the other? Then they wrote, sorry, all. I forgot I was sent to New Zealand. <laughs> My apologies. Yeah, I was going to... The the article does go on to clarify that, like, this was uh, seen in the New Zealand account. Yeah. But, I mean, if they're starting to launch it or test it in, like, New Zealand, I feel like a U.S. launch is very soon. Yeah, New Zealand's first. Yeah. And, and, they, and they said this person uh, yeah. had it set to New Zealand because they wanted to play Resident Evil 4. Early. Yeah. Anyway, this page says, share the fun of Game Pass, ultimate benefits, blah, 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 blah. Uh, one month for $40. <laughs> but I guess New Zealand? New what Zealand. is that? Who's, who's uh, New that's Zealand? That's the equivalent of $25 US. All right, fine. But that's, that's a lot. That's still a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. I mean, makes sense. How many people do you get? Five, five shared among five. So five total? Yeah. So like you, me, the three other people. We dog five bucks. Yeah. Uh, that is not as good as Nintendo. No. I mean, not. you get a lot less with Nintendo. But, yeah. But eight. You get eight for $40 a year. Yeah. What well, is- I I do the expansion pass. Yeah. Now. So I think that's $80 a year. Yeah, but still, that's for the year. Yeah. Yeah. What is it with Spotify? Oh, I don't do the family plan. No, I know, but I'm like, I'm trying to like other services that have similar family plan options. What happened to your camera? It's not going to your I camera don't know, anymore. Man, it's your thing. Just give me like sign up, I guess. I'd hope this is for five accounts, not locked to five consoles. Oh, mm. yeah. Yeah, no, I think it would be. Because the whole point is like, you know, you're not going to, like Microsoft knows, they're not going to put it on, you're not going to limit you to that. Yeah, you know? yeah, no. But, uh, Microsoft's pretty good at Game Pass. Yeah. They, they've been pretty good good, good with that. Apple Music is like $15 a month for family. That's I think cool. that's a comparable. Yeah, Spotify is 16 I mean, it makes so, sense because you got a lot of people. You, it, it's, yeah. it's a bundle. $16 a month for six accounts. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this this makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you have a family and you need, and they're all gamers, but yeah. uh, I think it makes the most. It, it, I think it makes even more sense because, like, if you have a family, just 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 share an account. Yeah, <laughs> but 
it makes more sense if you got a group of bros. Yeah. And you all want to save some money. Yeah. That that's the uh, the the best use case because then you just pull the money together. So Spotify, sixty dollars a month divided by six people, that's just under three dollars. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's pretty easy to do for six people. This this is definitely gonna be I feel like a little bit harder for some. Sardi says there's an FAQ five accounts, not devices. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Uh okay. I I don't think that's worth the price the, the 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 nintendo one was marginally more money yeah so i was like okay i mean that makes and, and it was cheaper for if you had a second person it was cheaper. yeah this one i don't think so well no because what it's is it game pass ultimate or is it just regular game pass i think it's the whole thing don't, don't they do the whole thing now so ultimate yeah so if ultimate is 15 dollars a month uh yeah Fifteen dollars versus twenty five. Yeah, so it's, we don't know exactly how much it's going to be, but it's probably going to be twenty five. Probably. Uh, okay. Which, if it is, like that's that's a good deal. It's just you know what? It's just Game Pass is expensive. It's expensive. Game Pass already, is just yeah. already expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Konami man on Xbox. If you have Game Pass, can all the accounts on that Xbox access the games? No. I believe you need to be locked. Yeah. In. Yeah. But like. If I was on your console and you downloaded a Game Pass game, I couldn't play it on my account. I believe that's how it works. Okay. Yes. Because I think if you, if you buy a game, I can play it on my account. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That that works like that on every console, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh let's stick to Xbox. Xbox a cheaper Xbox expandable storage cards are on the way. Yes. Um, Microsoft appears to be ready a new Xbox expandable storage option from other manufacturers. A new Western Digital one terabyte expansion card for the Xbox Series S and X uh, has been spotted early on Best Buy, priced at one hundred and eighty dollars US. Uh, it's the first time we've seen Xbox expandable storage that's not manufactured by Seagate. Thank My- God. Yeah, Microsoft originally launched Xbox expandable storage cards nearly three years ago with its Series S and X consoles. The one terabyte cards were priced at two hundred and twenty dollars. And manufactured exclusively by Seagate. While we've seen 512 gigabyte and 2 terabyte options appear from Seagate, prices have so stubbornly remained high despite similar storage for PlayStation 5 consoles dropping significantly. An additional manufacturer for Xbox expandable storage is much needed and will hopefully help push prices in the right direction. Best Buy's listing, which has now been removed uh, for the Western Digital C51 terabyte expansion card, is $40 less than the Seagate model. At $180, it's still hugely overpriced for one terabyte of storage, especially when you can find a Samsung 980 Pro one terabyte PCIe Gen 4 drive. Just build a PC, bro. For $80 <laughs> right now. Microsoft decided to go with proprietary storage for its Series X and S consoles, which makes the installation more consumer friendly, but pricing has suffered with only a single manufacturer. Sony opted for a uh, rather standard M.2 SSD expandable storage slot instead which allows PS5 owners to use a variety of drives on their market. You can even use a slower PCIe Gen 4 drive on the PS5. It's a little weird that the article mentioned the Samsung 980 because that's just not comparable. I mean, it's comparable, I guess, but because it's the same, like... It's it's one terabyte of storage. Yeah, but it's... The the reason these are expensive is because they're the smaller types of of uh, of M dot two drives, right? But even and they're also more expensive because there's a proprietary hardware in there that like locks out using yeah. it on other devices and you putting your own device in there. That's the biggest problem. Yeah, yeah is, is is that Xbox puts some proprietary bullshit on it. Yeah, but uh. Saying that there's an eighty dollar device out there is is a little because th- you're gonna have that sticking out the back of your Xbox. You already no. have the 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 storage the expandable storage card sticking out of the back of your Xbox. It just doesn't stick out that much. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That they're the small ones, and those are more expensive. It's more expensive right, to get the still, small one. I think the 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 general audience is not gonna give a shit if it's gonna be that much sticking out or that much sticking no, out. No, it just won't work. It'll just be freaking flopping around. Yeah. What I'm, what, I'm saying. what I'm trying to say is they're not gonna care how much is sticking out of the back of the Xbox when they're looking at eighty dollars versus hundred and eighty dollars. 
Right. Okay. When it comes okay. down to it, you're gonna get the eighty dollar one, and you're not gonna care how much is sticking out of the Xbox. I think the 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 biggest reason they included that is because you can get the bigger one for a PlayStation Five. That too. And it's cheaper, yeah. and then you can get basically whatever you want. What they should do, because you see it all the time on Amazon, you see like shells for expandable storage on Xbox. You just yeah. put your own hard drive in, and it'll work, and it doesn't because mm-hmm. it's missing the lockout chip. Yeah. If Microsoft just sells the shell, yeah, for like fifty bucks or whatever, and you pro- provide your own hard drive, I think that will solve a lot. Twenty five bucks is what that should cost. The, a controller costs twenty five dollars to make, and then they charge you. Seventy dollars for it, so they're gonna mark it up yeah. as much as they can. It's plastic. It's a piece of plastic. Yeah. Like like the controller's got a lot of shit in it. Well, this they, thing is a piece of plastic. They're gonna want to put their little lockout chip in there. That's nothing. That little lockout chip. They're gonna find a way to charge. Well, less than a dollar for one of those chips. Yeah. Well, they're gonna find a way to charge you more than a dollar for it. <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah. Video games are stupid. Don't play them. Majin Jameson. Thanks for the fifteen months. Hey, did you know Sonic the Hedgehog has died? <laughs> Funny you should say that. Sega confirmed the death of Sonic the Hedgehog on Friday. He's dead, said Sega in the <laughs> announcement trailer for the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, a brand new official and most importantly free murder mystery game available now on Steam. Uh I wonder how long it is. You know what? I could probably look it up. The murder of Sonic the Hedgehog is a point-and-click adventure slash visual novel. The setting, a train. The occasion, Amy Rose's birthday. And a murder mystery party where Sonic is the victim. Taking on the role of an original character, players must uh, interrogate suspects like Knuckles, Rouge, Shadow, Espio, and other Sonic characters uh, to uncover the anthropomorphic antagonist responsible. Players will also enjoy isometric platforming minigames and apparently based on the above trailer. Sega knows that the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog is not canon, which could give away, which could give the company an out for explaining that Sonic the Hedgehog is actually very much alive and will star in future video games, movies, animated shows, and fan and fanfics, without diminishing the impact of the character's real death. Uh, I also just don't think he's like. I don't think the story is even going to be that he's dead. I think it's just like a goof. Yeah, like 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 in the story, like a meta goof. Yeah, but uh. Anyway, uh, it's free. Yeah, it's- and it's only two and a half hours long. There you go. You so I might, I, I might actually play this. Yeah, this is this is cool. This is fun. This is nice. This is a. Uh, it's like an April Fool's joke, but not really, because like they made they actually made something for you to play, and like they're serious about it. Yeah. Um, this is fun. Like this, this is a nice thing that they did. Sega does some cool things sometimes, and you know yeah. what? Works on Mac. Yeah, there you go. Downloaded so, it um, now. Yep. So same here. <laughs> Did I tell you I was playing Celeste on Mac? No. I downloaded, I realized Celeste, well, I tried to put it on my arcade cabinet. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was giving me problems because my stupid controller sucks. Uh-huh. Uh, and then I uh, realized it's for Mac, so I just downloaded it from Mac and I started playing it on the keyboard. It's freaking go. awesome. And it's got, you know, cloud save. Yeah. Well, now yeah. that APT controllers work on the Mac. Yeah. Yeah. I can play it wherever I want. Uh, I'm I'm replay I'm trying to replay Celeste because they have uh, 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 mods on 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 PC, and I want to play those. But I want to relearn all the mechanics of Celeste. Yeah. So the game will slowly teach you all the different mechanics. Uh, unknown boy says, "Are you guys racist?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, this is what a day! What a day! What a day! Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> you know who we hate most of all? Unknown boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say dogs that are naughty. Oh, like naughty okay. dog who says the Steam Deck support is at the bottom of the list while it tries to fix The Last of Us on PC. This is annoying, but at the same time, I get it. Yeah, The Last of Us is officially marked. As unsupported on the Steam Deck on its store page, and Naughty Dog says getting it verified will have to wait until the game's patched on PC. Prior to launch, it appeared that The Last of Us Part 1 would be Steam Deck verified or at the very least partially supported, with the game's lead, Neil Druckmann, confirming the game would run on the Steam Deck and Valve using shots from the game for promotional for promotions for the handheld. But that would turn out to be a pipe dream as the, P- as the game's PC performance came to light. 
The Last of Us is currently a bad PC port, and Naughty Dog has been putting some belated work into getting it patched up to make the game playable over the past week. A new hotfix aimed at addressing some of these performance concerns arrives later today, April 4th, and a much larger patch is promised to release on Friday, April 7th. Naughty Dog has also confirmed that the Steam Deck verification will have to wait until these fixes and any thereafter have been released to improve the game's overall PC performance. Yeah, I heard that it's not too good on PC. Yeah, I've seen some of the bugs. It looks like it's very bad. Uh, yeah, and I saw a picture of Joel on the Steam Deck, and it looked horrible. Yeah, I saw I saw the one picture that's going on with Ellie with like um, unrendered hair. I don't it's think I don't think funny. I've seen that. Uh, I saw Greg Miller uh, on his podcast. He was uh, he was like, "Good, yeah. this is what you get for playing these games on PC. You should be a PlayStation guy." <laughs> I know he's joking. Yeah, like I get the joke. Yeah, but at the same time, I kind of appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm kind of, I'm very tired of PC players being like, just play it on PC. Just build a PC. It's not that hard. You can do it. For PC. Everything plays better on PC. Just play it on PC. And then The Last of Us comes out, and it's like, oh, but it's, it's, it doesn't work on PC. You should be nice to PC players. I will. I will say, we've gotten less of that lately less have, less of yes. pc players being really like I, master race i think it. it's uh well i think that generally happens at the beginning of the console's life cycle because when a console launches that sort of sets the standard for like game performance going forward i, I don't and know then, like if... by the end of the console life cycle like you start to see like the cracks in the hardware but then like pc like the pc can play everything so like that's when it starts to that happened a lot, but I, with this console generation, I didn't really see a lot of that. It's get, like that gap is getting smaller. Yeah, like I, last... I, I, I think the the consoles came out and, and... Shh. quiet you. <laughs> <laughs> I think the consoles have gotten really good, and and PC players saw the new consoles and they were like, I mean, this time maybe you can't build a PC for five hundred bucks. Yeah, you know. Well, because I remember last gen when Cyberpunk came out and it was junk on consoles but it was okay on pc and everyone was like well you should have just played it on pc mm -hmm. like that's not an option for everybody it was really bad during the 360 ps3 era like the end of that because like a lot of games were running poorly on the 360 ps3 but they were doing phenomenally on pc yes so, well yeah like games like dishonor and far cry 3 especially they were doing good on pc they were doing yeah they performed much better on pc than they did on xbox because there were a lot of games that performed very bad on pc okay. on pc like uh the famous example were the Arkham games. Yes. Those were bad. Well, specifically Arkham Knight. Yeah. But I think that had a lot more to do with the problems in, during development than it did, like, what consoles they were developing for. Okay. Um, It's funny you should say that, because apparently Iron Galaxy, who ported Arkham Knight to PC, also did this. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. And everyone's like... That explains a lot. They, they learned from Arkham Knight. I'm like, well, the Iron Galaxy also made Knockout City, and everyone liked that game. So Knockout City was sick. Yeah. Okay. So, there you go. I mean, it wasn't all... It, it wasn't exactly like the pinnacle of graphical fidelity no, or anything. Well, like, it, was, it wasn't uh, they, winning any my awards. Point is they know how to make a game. <laughs> okay. So... Well, uh... I, I mean, I'm not surprised that, uh sony you know doesn't prioritize the steam deck or like right. that isn't gonna prioritize making their game run great on the lowest hardware on but PC. i mean like sony bought a pc port house to do porting over of their yeah. games didn't they so like mm -hmm. clearly it's a priority for them or at least it's something that they're taking more seriously well they're doing the thing that they said microsoft might do which right. is put their game on other consoles and make it purposely worse. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> They're like, we don't care that it doesn't work on Steam Deck. Yeah. Uh, but it may work on the Asus ROG handheld that's coming out. Maybe. Maybe. I'm, I, I got thoughts about this. Okay. I, I, a lot of people sent this to me. So I have to be very blunt. I have a meeting with Asus this week. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. I do know that uh, some YouTubers like Linus and Dave2D got their hands on it. Yes. And then some YouTubers today were like uh, just posting reactions to okay. this. Okay. 
the biggest question mark is what the hell's the price? Yes. Because uh, it's a Windows. This is the, the Windows 11. Asus ROG Ally. Yeah. The Asus ROG yeah. Ally. They're yes. going to be mad at me. Well, yeah, because when, when I talk to them. Republic of Gamers. Yeah. When I when I inevitably have to do a video that yeah. they pay for, <laughs> I cannot get that wrong. Yes. Uh, according to Asus, the Windows 11 powered ROG Ally is a customized Ryzen APU from AMD inside, uh, like the Arith SOC inside Valve Steam Deck, and Asus uh, claims that it is the fastest one from AMD yet. While Valve Steam Deck has been the most successful attempt at making PC gaming truly portable, uh, there have been plenty of competitors like the INU2 or other Switch like machines from GDP and uh, 1X Player. However, in the versus experience, they've relied on AMD uh, 680, uh, sorry, uh, 6800U chipset uh, instead of a custom design and generally lack the right combination of horsepower and efficiency that you expect to see from handheld machines. A hands-on with uh, video by Dave2D confirms a global launch plans from Asus as well as a few more specs like that it's smaller, lighter, and flatter than the Steam Deck. So he said it was flat. I watched his video. He said it was flatter and then showed the comparison and they looked the same. <laughs> uh, it's a 608 grams. It's uh, 28 millimeters by one, 113 millimeters by 39 millimeters uh, versus the 669 grams, uh, 298 millimeters by 117 by 50.5 millimeters of the Steam Deck. The Ally uh, has a 7-inch 16x9 display with a 1080p resolution, 500 nits of brightness, and a uh, 112 hertz refresh rate compared to the Steam Deck specs, which is a 1610 7-inch display, uh, 800p resolution, 400 nits of brightness, and a 60 hertz refresh rate. The chipset inside uses the AMD Zen 4 architecture with the powerful RDNA 3 graphics tech seen in the GPU. Uh, another hands-on video from Linus Tech Tips is a little longer, showing uh, even more angles of the device and the software customizations Asus has set has set up the prototype unit with. As Dave 2D noted, there's a fingerprint sensor along the top, and Linus mentioned it could be used for switching between multiple accounts. He also said the prototype was much quieter than the Steam Deck, uh, measuring at just about 20 decibels compared to the Steam Deck's 37, uh, with a dual fan system that sucks air in from the back and vents it out from the top. Also noted, the SSD and joysticks appear to be replaceable. Having a few more pixels, a higher refresh rate, and a more powerful processor sounds good, but it could also tax the battery while gaming on the go. And Windows 11 is a question mark in comparison to Steam OS for efficiency. So far, day 2 d said the details on the battery were unavailable, as, as was any information on pricing other than it will be competitive. The ROG Ally uh, also has a visible standard setup of dual analog sticks, left-mounted D-pad, four face buttons, Plus a few smaller buttons around the screen to access the system menu and okay. settings. We okay. get it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Here's the comparison between the Ally and the Steam Deck. Uh, I think whenever they make a new Steam Deck, they're getting rid of those touchpads. I yeah. think those touchpads they realized uh, were a good idea in theory, but nobody's using them. Yeah. And they make the system so much bigger. Uh, this system is smaller because it doesn't have the touchpads. Mm -hmm. They went with a 16 by 9 screen instead of a 16 by 10 screen that the Steam Deck has. 16 by 10 is, I don't know, gamers like it for some reason. Yeah. Uh, you got a little bit more height. Yeah. There's a 16 by 9, but it looks like there's a bezel on yeah. the top and bottom. So they could have easily done 16 by 10. I don't but know why they did that. But it's 1080p, which is important to some people. It's 1080p, also 120 hertz, yes. which is a lot more resolution and a lot more hertz than uh the steam deck yes which is crazy that's going to be more taxing on the battery and more expensive yes so i don't know how worth it that is yeah to I, get that spec i don't see this being i think that's the thing is going to be more expensive than the steam deck it, or it, it has is going to cost as much as the most expensive steam deck yeah i think the most they can do is the most expensive steam deck yeah uh or a lot i mean the thing is that it's a Windows computer. Yeah. And you get a lot more versatility with a Windows computer. Uh, there's a lot more games that you'd be able to, to to play with it, which is great. But the reason the Steam Deck is so cheap is because they take 30% of all of the revenue that you yeah. buy on Steam. So, like, they're able to sell it for cheap. So, uh, 
I know Asus Asus is trying to be competitive, but they really got to undercut it. And yeah. I don't know how they're going to do that. Yeah. Um, I mean, they could very well sell it for a loss, but like how much of a loss are they willing to take on something like this? And ha- and where's the return? Yeah. I don't understand where the return would come from. Yeah, because it's not like you're, you're buying. You're probably going to buy games from like Steam or Epic on here yeah so i I don't really understand i i mean the tech seems cool dave 2d spent a really long time talking about how quiet the fans are yeah because the steam deck's pretty loud yeah uh but not i've played i've played a bunch of these different windows devices yeah they're all horrible (laughs) in all different ways i mean it's kind of cool that you get to play windows games in a handheld format Mm. but most of them are just a mess in a lot of ways. Yeah. The best way Ace, Asus can can fix this, can remedy this, is they need to undercut uh, uh, all of the other Windows basic yeah. ones. And they need to make a UI. Yeah. Something that uh, will be easy to, na- to navigate with a controller. It can't just be Windows. Um, and I think they have... I think there's potential for them to do that. Uh, where'd it go? Uh, big tits I love <laughs> says uh, have people lost all originality on making a different handheld console what do you want it to look like because it's just looks like they all everybody wants a handheld console with two thumbsticks a d-pad face buttons L and R triggers and what else is there to do they, they want can, it to be dual screen they can do it portrait mode like the like the original Game Boy instead of landscape mode the problem is it's got to play as many games as yes. it can. Yes. And if you make a fucking weird shit, it's not going to do it. Like if you make a dual screen 2DS, yeah. it's not going to be able to play Arkham games and Call of Duty games. Yeah. You're going to have to make Arkham and Call of Duty it, games specifically for it and they're going to be worse. It's hard enough because like on PC, like you know, you're you're especially like older PC games, you're playing with a mouse and keyboard. So there's a lot more things you can do with the mouse and keyboard than you can do with a controller. Yeah. Uh, the fact that you know, they're able to boil it down, everything down now to a traditional controller layout is miraculous enough on its own. Yeah. Because like first person shooters for PCs, like dating back to like the 90s, you used every button on the keyboard. We remember back in the days when games would come out on console. And every console would have different button layouts. Yeah. They would all... Uh, some consoles had less buttons than yeah. other consoles. Some consoles had more buttons than yeah. other consoles. Uh, and no one knew how to develop uh, globally for all yeah. these different platforms. Hell, so now that we have a universal layout, this is good. Hell, I would even say, like, back in the day on PC, like, you got a lot more... We- like, Halo kind of, like, standardized the whole you only get two weapons mm-hmm. in the first person shooter. On PC, you got a lot of weapons, and they were all mapped to every single number button. One yep. was your pistol, two was your shotgun, <laughs> three was your machine gun, so forth and so on. That was really difficult to do on console. You had to cycle through yeah. every gun one by one by one. It wasn't until like Gears of War where they figured out, oh, just map them all to the D-pad. Yeah, and like or a weapon wheel. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I still play games on PC now. Hey, it switched to you finally. Hey, I still play games on PC uh, and. Uh, scroll wheel yeah you use a scroll wheel yeah and uh, i mean back in the day not every computer had a scroll wheel <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah if i flick the scroll wheel and cycle through yeah. all the different weapons um i uh love the positioning of the d-pad on the steam deck which looks like it would be uncomfortable but yeah. it's not it, it actually works really well so I'm curious to see how I'm gonna like the positioning here. It's got the weird like new Xbox style D pad. Yeah. But I actually kind of like the new Xbox. Yeah, style it's D-pad. not terrible. Yeah. Like I I I don't hate like those styles because like it gives you full range of motion when necessary instead of just the the, the four directions. But the Xbox one is clicky, so you yeah. feel the feedback when you hit yeah. the right spots. Hopefully, this is just as clicky. I don't know what the buttons are gonna be like. I'm hoping for those mouse clicks or dome switches or something, but I doubt it. Um. Otherwise, there's a lot of cool tech here. I just uh, have little faith in Windows devices. Yeah. You know, uh, I I love that all of these different companies, all these different big companies, are throwing their hands in the handheld ring. I uh, it's just historically we haven't seen a good Windows one yet. Well, I think you know the fact that because a lot of these ones 
are made are made by much smaller companies. This mm-hmm. is being made by like a big PC manufacturer. And the fact that like you'll probably see these in like Best Buys and Targets and Walmarts, I think helps out a lot. Yeah. So it'll get it'll get the system out in more hands. Uh and also too, like you know, like I said, they're a big PC manufacturer. They probably have the money to spend on R and D to figure out how to do it properly. Yeah. And speaking of uh big manufacturers making a handheld, uh, remember when Logitech made one? Yes. Well, it is on sale right now. Uh, the biggest problem with this Android device that Logitech made called yeah. Logitech G Cloud, the biggest problem with it was that it was expensive. It was $350 when yeah. it launched. You can now get it for $250. There you go. If you use code LogiSpring, and that is not an affiliate in any way. I just think the G Cloud is pretty cool. It was just too expensive. Right. Um, This is still up there, but it is a very nice Android uh, uh, device. And it, yeah. you can put emulators on here and make it run really good. They had a big booth at PAX, Logitech G yeah. Cloud. It was a Logitech G Cloud, just booth. for the G. Cloud. Yeah, wow. So that was pretty. That they're really going for it. Yeah. So it's good that all of these people all right. are are getting into into handhelds. Now, it, it can only be a good thing, even if this thing comes out and it sucks. Yeah. It just means someone else will try. Yeah. Uh, thank you, FCS Gamer, for the nine months. It's Tuesday, baby. Bay bay. Okay. This guy likes his Tuesdays. Uh oh, we're running out of news to talk about. Mario moving away from mobile. As Nintendo takes a shot at the box office with the Super Mario Brothers movie, the animated film uh featuring the iconic mustachio plumber, the gaming company has been quiet about revealing what's next for the franchise. But while Shigeru Miyamoto, the legendary video game designer, Nintendo fellow, and self proclaimed Mario's mom, uh it's true, he did call himself Mario's mom. Um, won't say where Mario is running next. Uh, he is forthright about where he won't be your smartphone sitting down with variety for this week's cover story on the making of the film. Miyamoto said firmly mobile apps will not be the primary path for future Mario games. After two moderately successful, but dwindling iOS games, plus another shutter, uh, plus another shuttered after two years, Nintendo is pulling Mario away from the mobile market released in 2016. Super Mario Run grossed $60 million in its first year, while 2019's Mario Kart Tour generated $300 million compared to Mario Kart 8's $3 billion in counting. While uh, without explanation, Nintendo removed 2019's Dr. Mario World from the app markets two years after it was released. First and foremost, Nintendo's core strategy is a hardware and software integrated gaming experience, said Miyamoto, who played a pivotal role in designing the Wii among other, other Nintendo consoles. The intuitiveness of the control is part of the gaming experience. Uh, when we explored the opportunity of making Mario games for the mobile phone, which is a more common generic device, it was challenging to determine what the game should be. That is why I played a role of director on Super Mario Run to be able to translate Nintendo's hardware experience into the smart devices. Elaborating on the merits of Run and Tour, Miyamoto continued, having Mario games be mobile apps expands the doorway for far more uh, for far more audience to experience the game and also expands the Mario gaming experience where you only need your thumb on one hand. Referencing the innovation of Super Mario Maker series and Super Mario Odyssey, Miyamoto called the ultimate evolution of a Mario adventure game uh, on a typical 3D platformer. The Nintendo exec laid out how the company began to develop a Mario game. Um, we try to define what is the gameplay, what is the method, and then def- uh, define what devices we go on. Mario isn't the only IP mascot on the mobile market. Currently, the company's original IP is represented on the App Store with Fire Emblem Heroes, uh, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, and Pikmin Bloom. Uh, But with the company's modest victories come uh, just as many misfires, with Nintendo ending services from Fermi Tomo, uh, Dragala Lost, and Dr. Mario World just a few years after each app's launch. With Super Mario Bros. movie opening in tandem with Universal Studios Super Mario World, Nintendo fans are eager to for the next mainline Mario game uh, following 2019's Mario Maker 2 and 2021's Bowser's Fury expansion. It's been nearly six years since the last major installment, 2017's groundbreaking Mario Odyssey. Uh, so yeah, I just don't expect to see Mario on your phone anymore. That's interesting because I thought Mario Run did really good. I mean, it seems like it did well enough. It's just where they go from there. They kind of made like the quintessential Mario mobile game. Yeah. And it didn't re- it it didn't set the world on fire. I mean, it did really good. It's, yeah. it's just, it's not like 
that's not where Mario belongs. Like it, like it didn't, it doesn't fit Mario to, yeah. to, to be there. I think, I mean, those games, mo- that game in particular was released during a time that was during the Wii era. And like, that was when Nintendo was at a low point and whenever Nintendo it was during the a- Wii era, Wii U era, sorry, okay. Wii U era. It was during a low point. And whenever Nintendo was at a low point, it was, this happened during the GameCube era. This happened during the Wii U era. It'll probably happen during the next switch era. The uh, success of the switch era. Everybody in their mother is saying, like, Nintendo should stop making consoles, just make third-party games. Or, during the Wii U era, Nintendo should just put all their games on mobile. Yeah. So, Nintendo did that. They tried it. They they didn't do exactly what they want, what everybody wanted. They did their own thing. And it's like, everyone was like, no, not that. Yeah. Nintendo's done. And then the Switch came out and everybody loved it. Well, yeah. I mean, I think that there was a potential during that time where they might have had to make the jump to mobile yeah. and, and they probably would have been really that successful. was also during the time when like everybody thought mobile gaming was the future like everyone was just going to play mobile games from yeah. now on and then the ps4 and the xbox one came out and those were you know those reestablished console gaming as the definitive way to play video games again i think that there is a lot of merit to mobile but it became way too oversaturated it did it, it's a lot of samey games now it's a lot of like match yeah. three puzzle games and a lot of like novelty I, games really. I, I think the problem is that uh apple and 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 google like make enough money with their gaming marketplaces that they don't really care to make it more curated and prestigious yeah. to make a, a a mobile game you know uh they, they can't really squash the 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 stigma that mobile games aren't real games yeah uh because they're already making enough money and they don't need to surpass it you know well i think also too like i think people finally realize like we're not looking to play the legend of zelda on our phones we're not looking to play final fantasy games on our phones we're looking to play tetris and threes and angry birds and crossy road and like cut the rope like smaller games bite-sized games that you can do in like a few minutes while you're on the bus or on the train well, but in the backseat of mom's car i don't think there's anything wrong with playing like a full-on I, mario i don't think so either but i don't think you know that's a smaller market compared to what the majority of people are doing on their phone the majority of people, if they want to play a video game, they'll play a video game on their PC or on their console. If they're playing on their phone, they're just doing something quick because they're going to pull out their phone, they're going to look at Twitter, yeah. and then they're going to switch over to there's, Angry Birds. There's a lot of other competition on the phone other than games. Yeah. They, they, If you're going to open up a game, you need to immediately be immersed. Like exactly. you, Something has to happen immediately that gets you in the game. And in yeah. Mario Run, you open the game and you, you go, run, yeah. run, and then you jump and stuff. If you open up new super mario brothers on your phone it's gonna play a cut scene and then you're yeah. like all right can come on i'm on the, i i my, my stop is the next stop like i gotta i gotta go get get me in the game mario run also had like a real like for a mobile game had a really weird uh monetization method because like mobile phone games like they're free and then they just charge you for every single thing mm-hmm. mario run the first like two levels were free and then you pay ten dollars flat for the entire rest of the game, and everyone's like, "That's not how we do things around these parts." Yeah, and, and and Nintendo thought that they nailed the model. Yeah, and then they're like, "Oh, I guess people aren't interested." Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's all the news. Yes, which so. means it's time for the button. Where's it? Hello. Oh, I'm there. There yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right oh you found it yep this is by beetle moses who says today we are drawing bowser devouring his son and it is a drawing on an index card of bowser devouring his son <laughs> what's the painting this is based off of oh uh, neptune devouring his i think so it? something like that uh yeah beautiful yes beautiful uh, saturn devouring saturn his son. i was close yeah it's one Give of me the props planets. i took yeah. art history Jupiter, I believe. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Now we will talk to you people. Yes, we will start with people who left comments on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Uh, yeah, we got, what do we got? We got Megan Lovett, who says, every time they read one of my comments, it gives me a moment of panic. Oh, wait, I can't see. 
before I realize why I just heard my own name through my headphones. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Megan. Ne- maybe next time, <laughs> like even if uh, her quote isn't pulled, we'll just say her name. Just like yeah. Uh, we'll say it right at the beginning of the yeah. show. Uh, Wooly Sage. I'm not playing the Zelda at. Lo- I'm not playing this Zelda at launch. I put 300 hours into Breath of the Wild to 100% the game. I can't do that right now. LOL. Yeah, I think you've earned a break. <laughs> Did you hear my trials and tribulations? No. I told myself I wanted to beat Breath of the Wild before the new game came out, yeah. right? And I haven't played it in years. Yeah. I think I stopped playing in 2018, the year after it came out. I just stopped. Yeah. I had like 30. Five hours in the game, uh-huh. and I just stopped playing. I had two divine beasts, right? And then I was like, ah, enough of this. Um, so I wanted to pick it back up and play the rest of the game. I decided, why don't I just go to Ganon? Because you can yeah. just run right to Ganon. Yeah. So I just the other day, I picked up the game, just walked right to Ganon. <laughs> first tried him. Really? Beat him first try. Really? So here's the thing with going right to Ganon. Yeah. If you do, when you fight the divine, you fought the divine beast. I have right? not fought a divine beast. You haven't fought a divine no. beast. All right, well here's some spoilers. Okay. There is a mini boss. Okay. Uh, like thunder blight Ganon or wind blight Ganon, depending on the divine beast that you fight. You have to fight the mini boss. Okay. And if you beat the divine beast and the mini boss, mm-hmm. you don't have to fight that mini boss before Ganon. Okay. If you walk right to Ganon without doing any of the divine beasts. You have to fight the Divine Beast's mini bosses Got at it. Ganon. So there's four Ganons and then the actual, and then actual Ganon. Calamity Ganon. So I only did two Divine Beasts. Right. So I had to fight two Divine Beasts. I, I mean, I had to fight two Ganons and then Calamity Ganon. Okay. And you have to do it all in a row. Got it. So the first two took me a few tries. Right. But then eventually I did it and I got to the Ganon Ganon. Yeah. And I one tried Ganon Ganon. Wow. I just parried a billion times it took me like 45 minutes but i just suffered through it and okay kicked his ass there you go i almost died a lot i got down to a <laughs> quarter of a heart and then after you fight ganon there's like a thing that happens that's supposed to be like a throwaway yeah. like 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 cinematic thing and i almost fucking died during that <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah just you know if you are in the same boat as me just walk right up just to ganon go, just, yeah just go for it whatever it took me it took me a night yeah. to just finish the game. So okay, you don't need a hundred hours in the game. Just <laughs> walk right up to Ganon. Anyway, uh, Andrew C says I can't understand people's opinions on how the game is DLC. If this was 2020, 2010, no one would complain. It's because journalists and YouTubers have people complaining about this. No, we would have said the same thing. We would have in twenty ten. We would have said this is more of the same game. We would have we would have had a different word for it. It wouldn't have been like. DLC, it probably would have been like, uh, like a rushed out sequel, or like an expansion yeah. expansion pack would have been the word. Yeah, we would have said that. Yeah, that that, that has happened before. Yeah, you know, but again, there's nothing really wrong with it. No, it, it, no, I I feel like Nintendo's the type of company where they will add enough newness to it where it will feel different. I think the sky alone is going to change how you play the game. Uh. I saw an article that said Nintendo does more of the same the best. Yeah. And I was like, ah, that makes sense. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, 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 they are really good at yeah. doing that. I mean, because, you know, if you think about it, Super Metroid mostly takes place on the same planet as the original Metroid. A lot of the areas are the same, but they found a way to make it feel new and different. Yeah. Uh, Nick Robbins says your politics are showing. LOL. It's only seven dollars. Oh, this is this is Twitter. Oh boy, because because of Twitter because we don't like Twitter. We don't like the direction of a social media app. Our politics are showing. Oh no, the Wolf Brothers are woke. It's only seven dollars with verified information. Motherfuckers will buy four hundred dollar Jordans. Who? Who? No one in this room. I'm wearing Vessies I right got, now. <laughs> these are like $40 Adidas's. Um, I got these shoes for free. <laughs> um, $400 Jordans, $1,000 on video games. Okay, that might be true. Yeah. Uh, computers, but complain about $7 on Twitter on the ruse of saying it's blockchain. Get the fuck out. It's blocking. It's blocking? The ruse of saying it's blocking? We never said it's blocking. We were just saying it's stupid. It's... 
it's going against the whole uh, 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 mantra of, yeah. of of the reason he bought Twitter was yeah. was for free speech, and now you have to pay seven dollars to have your speech heard. That's not what free it, speech it start- is. That's, that's seven dollar speech. Yeah. It starts with seven dollars, and then he does things like, "Oh, it's it's a thousand dollars for companies every month," or you know, now it you is, have, yeah, now you have to spend this much. What do you do? Like, it's he's gonna. God sp- forbid you have an LLC. Now yeah. all of a sudden you have to pay the LLC tax. Yeah, like <laughs> it starts. Then there's gonna be a more nickel and diming of like how you use Twitter to the point where it's gonna be unusable unless you give the richest man in the world a couple of bucks. I think the seven dollars is enough game breaking to ruin the 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 whole mentality around the service yeah so i saw someone like was trying to justify it was like oh how much do you pay for netflix a month and i'm like well and like everyone's like well netflix gives you something in return yeah gives you movies what does twitter give you in return nothing he he you're literally- providing the content for twitter and you have to pay twitter the seven dollars he bought twitter because he said it needs to be uh uh preserved as a utility right which i agree okay and then he says free speech needs to be preserved right. as a utility unless you're making fun of him and then he's charging seven dollars yes so the 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 utility and the and the free speech is just out the window yeah. all of a sudden because fr- speech is only free if you're rich you yes. have the money to pay yes. for it also let's not forget you're a fucking idiot he, he is in a lot of debt and he needs to take up that money Real fast, so it's okay if you're in a lot of debt if you're that rich. Yeah, you know. But the, what uh, is debt? Yeah, really. So you know, money's made up. Man, money's made up. Just run all your credit cards yeah. to the ground. Caleb Fox says I installed FIFA 23 on my Switch, and my brother, who's a big fan of the game, was surprised to hear the sound of it from my Switch. He then played a match, and apparently, it feels just like a crappy version of the regular FIFA 23, rather than a roster update. If the sporty people can't even tell the difference between the versions, I don't think EA cares at all. Well, there you go. Yeah, that 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 checks out. Yeah. Crappy version of the regular FIFA. Yeah, I mean, it's a Switch version. So, yeah, it's going to be. But he's saying, crap. like, it's instead of it just being, like, you know, the last few years FIFA again. Like, it seems to be, like, the current FIFA just bad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That yeah. Okay. I understand. All right, now we're in the chat real quick. Yes. Um, Bob, did you see the new Spider Verse trailer? No, actually, I did. did not. It was very good. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I didn't even see the first Spider Verse. You still? Yep. Wow. Every night, me and Hannah say we're gonna watch John Wick because she hasn't seen any of the John Wicks. Oh, it's a shame. I think she didn't want to watch the first John Wick because a dog died. Fair enough. But but it's very important. Yeah. Because. Of all of the revenge that happened. Yeah, there is so much revenge that happened. <laughs> there is, apparently, the new one is incredible. I, I, I know. That's why I want to get I got, through all of them. I got to get my ass out and see it somehow. You can't. You, it's Paramount Plus. I have that. Oh, I'm taking it. Okay. I'm taking it. Sonic 2 is also on there. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen that either. But I did see Top Gun on there. So. Uh, I'm never going to see Top Gun. I you heard should, it's great. You should. It's excellent. Uh, what do we got? We got Carolina Girl with 300 Bits who says, after years of playing cozy games, Animal Crossing, unpacking, trying other genres, do you guys have a recommendation? First person shooters. Yeah, go right in. Just just download Counter-Strike and go nuts. Or no, survival horror. There's a new Resident Evil game. I don't know if you've heard of it. Give that a try. Celeste is a... No, no, no. She's doing cozy games. She used to go on the opposite end. She used to do like horror games. Fast competitive first person shooter. Devil May Cry. You should play Devil May Cry because it's so fast and it's gonna give you so much anxiety because you're not gonna hit the combos play right. Play the burnout games because you'll be you'll be smashing into people going, yes. fuck you! <laughs> no. Celeste is a great uh uh action platformer that is disguised as a cozy game. So yeah. that might be a good way to ease into stuff like that. Or Doom uh, 2016. Or Doom 2016. <laughs> Just go right into that, like Lord DC says. Yeah. Um, Edward Bovis says, so Will, it, what is... Why is, why is it like this? Why is, what is your opinion on the new Blue Beetle trailer? Are you excited for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers special ones? I don't know what that means. Uh, the Ma- Mighty Morphin Power Rangers oh, special. It's called uh, that looks Once bad. and Always. That it, looks it bad. Looks like, it looks like Power Rangers. 
Like it looks no different from what it was when we were kids. So yeah, I'm sure that'll be fine. I'm not going to make that a priority to watch, but I'm sure if I ever do watch, I'm sure I won't hate it. Blue Beetle looks all right. I mean, it looks good. I mean, I'm not going to rush out to see that, but I'm sure it's going to be a fine movie. Did not appreciate the Batman as a fascist line at the end, but that's for a whole other reason. Um, it's it's going to be okay. I mean, this is not... First off, this was not James Gunn's movie. Like, this was in development before he came on, so stop saying you're going to boycott it because he's producing this movie, number one. Number two, stop saying you're going to boycott Warner Brothers because you, you're mad that the director you like isn't making these movies anymore. Oh, they're boycotting James Gunn because... Uh... He's not Zack Snyder. Oh, okay, that's... Dumb. Who's his friend? <laughs> who wrote James Gunn wrote Zack Snyder's first movie. Oh. So that's stupid. Yeah. Um Barbie I am going to see on opening day. Barbie Barbie actually <laughs> is pretty good. Uh The Konami man says is Batman not a fascist? No. That was in the 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 trailer. Yeah. That was funny. No it wasn't. <laughs> no it wasn't. Well, think about it. You're in if you're in this world uh the the main character's got a dad dad's gonna have some whacked out politics that's about true. a superhero you that's know true. so i was like that actually makes a lot of sense yeah but like i feel like they didn't have to put that in the trailer they could have saved that for the movie proper because like i feel like they're sig- they're signaling to the same people who say like oh if batman just donated all of his money then there won't be uh monsters made of clay running around gotham well City. think about i mean you don't have the same sort of like the general public of the DC Universe doesn't know that Batman has a lot of money. They right. think it's the scary guy that's just maiming just has all the this streets. tech. Yeah, yeah, he's a monster. Batman's this big scary yeah. monster that maims criminals. <laughs> so I understand the perspective. Uh, Holy lettuces. Do you have any plans to promote any indie devs or partner with any? Like Gerard was talking about on the recent Nintendo podcast. Um. There's been talks about that. Uh, I don't want to say anything. I personally don't really have. I have other plans that uh, are going to take priority, but it's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. So Gerard is a publisher. Yeah. You know, and he's uh, uh, been doing that. And he he, he gave us a lot of insight on how all that stuff works. And it seems pretty cool. Basically, you could just go up to a game that like uh, doesn't have a publisher yeah, and be like, let me publish it for you, and I'll promote it and stuff because yeah. you know they work with influencers, great. Um, but you know you got to give them a lot of money, and uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, Sui Kagura says, uh, "Would Will ever play Resident Evil with his daughter?" Yeah, she has to be much older. <laughs> yeah, what but, the hell? Uh, yeah, when she's like ten. Uh. I never liked any of Zack Snyder's films. Not sure if I will like James Gunn's movies either. James Gunn's movies are a lot more. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Zack Snyder's movies are a lot like this is not a criticism. Zack Snyder makes like harsh movies. He makes like more brutal movies, and like that fits for the majority of the movies he makes. That fits the subject matter of the movies he makes. James Gunn is a lot more wacky i guess you could say like he's got much more like weird grandiose ideas of like what movies can be like if you've ever seen slither like that's a weird wacky like type of alien invasion movie uh so it's it's very different mindsets on how like movies are made so uh friends nard says i mean my fiance powered through learning apex legends despite never playing first person games before it's possible that's Never playing a first-person game and then immediately jumping into a battle royale is kind of yeah. crazy. I would say if you want to try a first-person game but you haven't played one before, I would say maybe try Gone Home first because that actually teaches you how to like play a first-person game kind of without move. the shooting. Yeah. Okay. Raul says, uh, what do you think of the eGPU hooking up to the Asus oh, did you ROG? See? I did see it in the trailer. Yeah. I, I forgot to comment on it, but that looked pretty cool. Yeah. You could do that on other devices. Uh, uh, you could do it, I think, on the Steam Deck. Yeah. I think the big thing, though, was like this is going to be uh, a USB C one, whereas uh, I think Asus usually uses a proprietary plug. Oh. So this opens up. Well, this looked, uh, the freaking end looked ridiculous. Yeah. It looked massive. Um, that's good. 
Uh, that could be cool. I mean, I think it's completely like impractical. Yeah. To do that. I mean, it defeats the purpose of a handheld. Yeah. Um, but it makes it more versatile. Yeah. All right. Now I got a freaking handheld power in my whole arcade cabinet. Yeah. Uh, of Will and Bob, which is Mario and which is Luigi? I'm Luigi. Okay. Number one. <laughs> uh, yeah. The Ace Asus plug is PCIe. 8x without the thunderbolt overhead is that what's in the rog or is it i think that's what's in the usb c now yeah that's what's in the R- the the ally oh that's i mean yeah but that's that's kind of useless <laughs> um can you use a thunderbolt that would be cool if you can use a thunderbolt yeah. 3 like egpu that'd be cool it works with other ROG laptops too, I think. Okay, so okay. if you have both, that's cool. Yeah. But even, but then why don't you just use the Asus? Is that an Asus? I think it is. Does that have the ROG symbol on it? It does. All right, that's, You're that's, right. There you go. Uh, you know why? Because when I did the sponsorship for this laptop that we're currently streaming from, <laughs> uh, I said the name wrong and they made me redo it. So all of the if you watch the <laughs> video, uh, you don't see my face when I'm saying the name of the computer because uh. I, I cut away to dub it over. Uh, it doesn't have the same limits as Thunderbolt. Higher overhead? Really? Okay. I thought Thunderbolt was like the shit. If you aim the arrow right, you can one shot. I know you can one shot, Ganon. <laughs> everybody was tell everybody was so annoying. When I was fighting, when I was beating Breath of the Wild, everybody was telling me all of these wacky strategies. I, I was going to get the uh, the shield because it's in the basement of, of the castle. Yeah. So it's like right where Ganon is, is the shield. So I just like, I'll just go get the shield. Everybody's telling me, do this, do that. You got to do, you got to upgrade your runes. I'm like, why do I fucking go upgrade my runes? Look, he's freaking out. He's freaking <laughs> out. Why would you go upgrade my, why would I upgrade my runes? Mm. Then I might as well get the master sword. Then yeah. I might as well be the divine beast. I'm here to fuck up Ganon. Yeah. I just want to walk right up to him and go, hey, it's time, you know? So I wasn't doing any speed run tactics. That's the thing. You speed run the game. Yeah. You just run right after the game. You one shot wind blight. Just fucking. I just. I just fucking did it the yeah. way I did it. Okay. <sighs> Thunderball has lower bandwidth and higher overhead. I don't know what higher overhead means. Uh. I don't either. Multiple people have just said higher overhead. I don't know what that means. I think they're just saying it because they saw it in one of the. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, all right. We're done here. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So go and check us out over there on demand wherever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also on audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts from, folks. But no matter where you do, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Oh, thanks for being here, guys. Uh, I forgot to per- pick a person to raid. Um, I'm going to be streaming Mario Maker on Sunday night. Okay. It's also your birthday. Happy birthday. Yes. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, viewer levels. Uh, so if you type in the chat at any time, if you type in the chat, uh, exclamation point, uh, submit level, you can do it while we're offline too. You'll get a little Google form. You can fill it out uh, and people are going to be vetting the levels and picking the good ones for me to play on Sunday. So do it before Sunday. Don't just roll up on Sunday and submit your level. Try to do it before then. Um, anyway. Uh, I'll see you later. We'll have uh, more to say about the Mario movie at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, for now, why don't you go watch... Where is everybody? Uh, Fried Biscuits is streaming. He usually doesn't stream this late. That's crazy. He's playing uh, Wind Waker Crowd Control. Crowd Control is that thing where... Yeah, it's uh, when the crowd controls. It's when the crowd controls. I am familiar with the concept. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, go say hello to him, and we will see you later. Goodbye. Bye. I keep forgetting where the bye button is. There it is. There's both cameras.